Um, you arrived in Sweden, it's your first time in Europe, of course, people talk about winter and everything, but you yeah. haven't gone to the US yeah. for some time. Well, did, did that stint in the US make it easy for you to adapt to the European way of life? Because it's more or less the same. Yeah, somehow. Yeah, as much as it's way colder in Sweden, but yeah, having like uh, experienced the seasons uh, in the US, so it wasn't that, that difficult. How's, how's your experience at uh, Elf, Elfsborg and uh, I know at that time Marcelo was in Sweden. Yeah. Uh, we had also Ovela. Yeah. Who else? Who else? Is Ma Pake. Uh, Eric Joanna is also yeah. in Sweden. Uh, I know you, you must have contacted them. Yeah. Ask them about the, 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 the environment in the Svenska. Yeah. So uh, in terms of the level, how would you term the Svenskan or compared to what you had in the US? Uh, I think it's slightly higher compared to today. If it was the MLS, it was kind of difficult, but the USL, I think the, the Swedish league is slightly higher uh, than, than the USL. But yeah, I think to, to adjust, is, I think it's just to cope up with the intensity. Once you cope up with the intensity, I think, and like uh, the tactical discipline and the position, I think everything just flows. Yeah. What would you say was your highlight at uh, Elfsburg? I know you spent two seasons there. Yeah. Oh, what would you say was your highlight? Oh uh, what is that one day that you remember at Elfsburg and you, you said this was the, this is one thing I remember about my time there? I think the day we, we realized that we uh, had helped the club to qualify for the European competition. Yeah. That was Europa League? Yeah, Europa Conference League. Oh, Conference yeah, League. Yeah, because we finished second. Oh, in the league? Yeah. That was your second season? No, my first season. First season. Okay, it's kind of second because I joined them three games before the end of the season. And then now when I came to for the new season is when we finished second. Okay. Yeah. That was 20? Oh my. 2019, I think. 2019, 2020. After AFCON. Because I think yes, after AFCON. Yeah, immediately after AFCON, yeah. Yeah, actually we forgot to talk about AFCON because <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, you know, this is the biggest competition. Yeah. And uh, a lot of things are happening in camp around uh, the time before we, 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 we play our first game. Yeah. I remember Mandela getting an injury. Yeah. I think even Josh. Yeah. Got an injury, and yeah. now Kumu has to play. Yeah. <laughs> so how was it? How was it? Uh, first, the the, the 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 whole qualification run for us until the time we qualified. Yeah. I remember when uh, Minya took charge, you yeah. didn't feature prominently during yeah. this time during the qualifiers. Yeah. But now you're in France, and uh, people are getting injuries, and now yeah. you feel that you have to play. Yeah. You have to step up. How was it? Yeah, at first I think it's difficult because not playing the qualifiers. Yes, I was part of the group, but I never got a chance to play even one game. Actually, after my debut, I never played a single match for the national team until uh, during the time of AFCON. So from 2016 to 2019. Yes, you're part of the group, but you don't play. And then, like, Yes, I, for me, I was just excited, like, yeah, I'm part of the group, and yes, I'm happy to be here, I'm part of, like, yeah, it's kind of history, because the last time we were at AFCON was, like, a long time ago, but the expectation that I'll play, they were slim, because I didn't feature in any, like, qualifier matches, and now it's the tournament, logically, it's not possible, yeah, it's like, yeah, the people who play for the qualifiers, they get the chance to play for the tournament. Yeah, and then, yeah, unfortunately, like, yeah, some of the players get injured. And when I think we were playing Madagascar, I was on the bench. And Josh was also on the bench. So it was Musa and Mandela playing. And I think Musa had an injury. And I was like, yeah, definitely it's Josh. There's no way I'm, like, I'll play before him. And then I just hear, like, Joe, you have to warm up. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, you're surprised first. I'm like, me? Like, yeah. And I, yeah, you feel the pressure because 
you didn't expect it but now you're like yeah maybe this is the moment you've been waiting for like for the past three years and like yeah as much as there's pressure you just have to be calm and try to to seal the position and just do your best yeah even if like the future comes and you don't get playing time at least this one time you got you know you you gave your best yeah. so you you are there on stage of course man is here yeah uh, Maris is here yeah uh, why you start, why you start struck at that point when you first stepped onto the pitch and it's dawning on you these yeah. are the guys i watch on tv and here we are the first thing be, before i went on the pitch i talked to Bran, and he was like yeah now you have the chance you've been waiting for three years you're not just playing for yourself you have to play for me as well because yeah he's my friend we are so close and he can't be on the pitch and he's passing the responsibility to me like i have to represent him and like yeah i don't care about the other players the thing i have to do is to make him proud because yeah he can do nothing but I can do it for him. That was the only pressure I had, and okay, have fun as well. And because I think to to see how far you are as a player, you have to to compete against the top players. So I was like, yeah, it's kind of gauge yourself with the top players, not just like people you're on the same level with. But if you can manage the top players, then I think it will take it will show you uh, which level you are. So um, very good. Uh, I think. Your performance at Afcon is what sparked interest now. Yeah. Uh, I know at that time there was even talk of you going to France. Yeah. There was interest from I think it was Reims. Yeah. Uh, how was it? You discussing this with your handlers and uh, finally set, settling on uh, Elfsburg in Sweden. Which other clubs were interested, and uh, was it an easy choice for you to say let's go to Sweden? Most of the time, I don't deal with interests. I tell them if it's an interest, I don't, I don't. There's no need of me hearing it because it's just interest. Maybe it's speculations, but if there's an offer tabled, then probably we can talk about the offer. So when all this was happening, most of them there were interests, but nobody is giving out like is bringing an offer on the table. But Elsberg were the first ones to bring an offer on the table. So and. Like yeah, it was difficult to make it because like uh, you know the figures with the clubs and stuff to make the transfer possible was kind of dragging. But yeah, at, at last like uh, it was the end of the transfer window. Yeah, we came to an agreement and the the transfer happened because it was the only I think it was easier because it was the only club that all, like uh, tabled the offer. All the others were interest so. So you, you, you go to Elfsburg yeah. and you know, like your first season with Germany, I yeah. know you didn't finish the season with Germany because yeah. you had to live in between. Yeah. But I remember that year, Germany had a very good run in the league. I yeah. think even by the time you were leaving, you were either in top five or yeah. top six, I think so. Yeah. Then you go to Elfsburg and uh, of course you join them towards the end of the season. So you yeah. I only play played two games because I games. I joined them three games yes. towards the end and I played two games. Then the next season, so, you yeah. guys you finish second in yeah. the Alsvenskan. Yeah. Then Belgian interest comes in. Yeah. yeah of course, there was a uh, gang. There was gang. <laughs> uh, was it also another easy decision for you? Be- uh, what was the going through the bidding process? Because I, I actually I'm happy that you gave Elsborg a chance because they are the first people to, you know, yeah. take on something. So was that the same case with uh, Jen? No, I think this one was the difficult, w- the most difficult transfer. Yeah, because there were like lots, l- lots of interests, and not just interests, but like teams uh, tabling offers. Yeah, but it's not just for you. To make the transfer is not just about the figures, but there are a lot of things that needs to be considered. Yeah, so yeah, I think it was the most difficult because it dragged until the last day I was signing for for Ghent. So because every team was competing, like, but with my handlers, I think we we were looking at. Uh, 
the bigger picture, not just the figures and who is tabling the best offer and who is playing in the best league, I think was different. And one thing was like, okay, in Ghent probably have the chance to play European competitions compared to, okay, the France, maybe if I went to France, I'll have like uh, a bigger paycheck, but I'll be playing like in the, yes, there are good teams, but I won't have the chance to play the European competitions. Pro probably I'll be like in the bottom eight or bottom 10, but they said I'm fighting for the top four or like top five. So I think it's, it's there's, a, there's a difference. They say, yes, it's a slightly lower league or like in the ranking, but the competitiveness is kind of more, more so the same. Yeah, maybe France, they attract like uh, more players, but no quality players or top players, but in Belgium, I think it's also competitive, but I'll have the chance to play European competition. So I think that played a part in me making the move. And also we had to look at the play time and like uh, how good will I develop as well. So there are a lot of things to be considered before making the decision. Then you, you, you finally get the chance to play for Gent this season. Yeah. Actually, it's been an amazing season. You end yeah. up winning the cup competition. Uh, thank you. And uh, also doing very well in the league. Yeah. Um, how's your experience been and the presence of an African, uh, the Cameroonian Gajewa? How has yeah. it helped you to settle in at Gent? Yeah, I think, uh, yes, it's a different level compared to Sweden as well. But yeah. As I say, like the break I took, like from South Africa, I think it kind of helped me because until now it's just like wherever I go, I have to adjust. How diff no matter how difficult it is, I have to try my best to fit in as quick as possible. You can't prolong the time you need to to fit in the team. I try to fit in the team as quick as possible because I think it will give me. Uh, an added advantage because I just came in and I can fit in like quickly so but also being like yeah I think Ngade has played like uh, several seasons in Belgium and yeah he's way experienced than I am so just by the fact that yeah we play alongside each other I think is is kind of helpful because he has the experience he has been like he's he's won the AFCON he's been like played uh, several top games so um, you, you've mentioned that the level is yeah. a bit different in Belgium than yeah. Sweden. Maybe yeah. what are some of the differences you've noticed? Yeah, I think all the time is always the, the intensity and the quality of players. Uh, maybe the tacticals, uh, uh, how do you call it, the, the tactics of the league and the clubs, the quality of players, the intensity, I think they, they are way different compared to, to Sweden as well. Yeah. Um, you look at your path, the yeah. path you followed is more or less similar to what Victor followed, yeah. what Marika followed. Yeah. That, that, does that give you some sort of uh, encouragement that maybe you're on the right track and uh, maybe very soon yeah. you'll be in the top five leagues in Europe? Yeah, hopefully. Uh, I think, yeah, if you look at like the, the two you've mentioned, I think they are one of the players like uh, to play in the top levels. They are, is Victor, I think, Mariga, Oliech as well. But yeah, they had their part, I have my part. Yeah, maybe they somehow they are similar, but you don't know our fate are different. So we... Uh, there's the issue of uh, racism. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. this is something that <laughs> the world tries you know, yeah. to put down. But yeah. it's, it's something real and it's something yeah. we live with every day yeah. as uh, black people. Yeah. So uh, I don't know first, uh, of course, apart from the incident that was reported and captured on camera yeah. in Belgium, um, is, have you experienced it anywhere else? <laughs> I mean, as you said, it's something that is there, it's real. Uh, as much as you want see it every day or directly but yeah indirectly it's there so you j you just have to cope with it and deal with it so uh, there's this incident that was captured on camera what yeah. was uh, because it, uh when I, I i i watched that video i yeah. watched it like five six times 
Uh-huh. And I was looking out for your reaction, but yeah. you kind of, you know, you just shrugged it off. It's <laughs> like it didn't happen. What, yeah. was, what was going through in your mind and what was your, uh, like, your first reaction to it? Yeah, I mean, I, as much as it's something terrible, but yeah, there's nothing we can do. Yeah, because no matter how I react, it will have, if I react like on a terrible way, the blame comes back to me. It won't go to her, it's on me. So I think you've just grown and like not to be bothered with it. Yeah, directly it doesn't bother me that much, but yes, indirectly it kind of, because your siblings see this, your parents see this, and once they are devastated, you get devastated as well. But d- directly now, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. And, you know, as one of the leading players in Kenya at the moment, and, uh, yeah. is, it, is it something that you would like to voice your concern about how you, you, you expect uh, authorities to protect black players from such things? Because as, as we've talked about it, yeah. the, the, it's, it's something that we've even seen the likes of Balotelli condemning yeah. it uh, openly. Is it something that you'd like to see? you know, stunner action taken on it. I'll wish there'll be like equality and this kind of thing shouldn't happen, but if we are just realistic, I don't think it's something that will stop anytime soon. We've had it happen to top players, so not once, not twice, several times, but even if people complain and I don't know, start like, uh, the hashtags and all these, like, it will go for a period of time, they, it disappears and the thing will stay, it will keep happening. So for me, I think, yeah, it, as much as we try and make the authorities to be firm on it, but yeah, maybe just grow a thick skin and try to just rubbish it off for it not to affect us. Like, yes, it's it's something terrible but no matter what we do i don't believe it will be done away with anytime soon it's good you've mentioned uh, about you know developing the thick skin maybe yeah. this one year break that you took is it something <laughs> that really <laughs> made you so strong mentally that you yeah. can cope with everything that is thrown your way yeah i think so because like yeah this day as long as it doesn't like interfere with my career yeah, it doesn't bother me um, of course, we can't, you know, it's off season and yeah. they'll be interested in you after a very good <laughs> season, having won the cup and a uh, very good performance in the league in your first season in Belgium. Mm. I know there is uh, a lot of offers, uh, a lot of interest, and yeah. I'm not sure if there is any offers on the yeah. table yet, but uh, is it something that you are giving it a lot? More yeah. F- yeah, it's it's just been like uh, my first season in Ghent, yeah, and like, yeah, there are lots of speculations, but some of them I just see like somebody shows it to me because I'm on holiday, so I don't follow up like a lot of stuff. But yeah, we wait and see if I go back and now maybe I'll have, I'll start like having the conversations or listening to, to my representatives. So for now, it's just like I'm on holiday, I don't know whatever's happening because. Yeah, they know I'm on holiday and they respect that. They give me my time to kind of clear my head as well about football. So once we resume, is when probably I'll I'll get to hear from them. But at the moment, no, I don't know anything that is going on. I I trust them with the with the job, and I know like yeah, whatever they are doing is for for my best interest. So I don't need to worry about that. Do you feel like you're ready to take the step up uh, into the top five leagues in Europe? Spain, Germany, France, um, uh, England, or uh, Italy. Do you think uh, you are now ready and ripe after three? I think now it's three seasons in Europe. Yeah. Two with Elfsburg and one, one with uh, yeah. uh, Gent. Yeah. Do you feel like now you are ready to take the step up? I believe so, but I think it has to to be with the project. If the project is interesting, then yeah, for sure. But if it's just like uh yes it's a good offer on i just have to move blindly no i don't think so but it it depends with the with the project as well because i don't want i don't just want to move for the sake of moving because 
I want to make progress. I don't just want to move. Yeah. What, what are some of the factors you will be considering in your next move? Yeah, plus I can still develop and keep like grow to my maximum and get like my my peak season and yeah, I have to get like the playing time and the surrounding has to be conducive and like yeah, yeah, it's not just about the finances, but yeah, but the finances also matter. Um you've had a lot of luck or I'll say good fortune <laughs> whenever you are wearing a, a black and yellow jersey <laughs> look at Chenin, it gives you a breakthrough <laughs> after a few months you are going to the <laughs> stars yeah. uh, when you go to Elsborg you are yeah. wearing the black and yellow again <laughs> and now yeah. you, 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 you finish second in the league yeah. in your first stint in Europe yeah. so you know <laughs> Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, because then all the teams that I've represented in the same colors, then I've had like amazing seasons. So probably I should think about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, just as we end up, yeah. I know um, you are a player, and of mm. course uh, you are not based outside. But yeah. we, we 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 can't close this interview without talking about the football situation at home in Kenya. Yeah. Of course, we've stayed out in the international front for almost a year now. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe what is your message and how is it affecting you as players and uh, what would be your message maybe to government and the people involved in uh, this uh, situation? I mean it's a sad situation uh, because you have like tons of players who are struggling, who are suffering now because of the situation that is going on. but. Because I think with the national team, we were fortunate that it will expose a couple of players. I, I, I'm one of the beneficiaries, so I think it it will be key if we could be playing, because it it will have exposed several players as well. Yeah, the situation is saddening, but <laughs> yeah, it's sad because there are people we have really, really like people who are struggling because of things that could be avoided. Yeah. The only thing I can wish is like it can be resolved as soon as possible and we have a structure that can support the players as well. Because I think we do work so hard and I think the effort should be rewarded. Not like I have to go work on the field and I also have to come and work outside for me to earn a living. I think people are making tons of money playing football. Yes, we understand the situation here, but we don't need to to make like tons of money. But I think we should make a decent money that can give us like a decent life. A life like I think football can change lives, and it does change lives not just for individuals but the families and the community. So if it's happening elsewhere, I, I really think it should happen here as well. It's just we need just to have proper structures that can support the individuals as well. Yeah. Uh, just as we finish, uh, any other role models apart from Mandela, maybe internationally? Players you look up <laughs> to, you know, you're a calm defender, so I'm trying to think <laughs> of a calm defender. I look at the uh, name of this guy, a point playing uh, defender. <laughs> Van Dijk, very good on the ball. Yeah. Maybe uh, which other players do you look up to? I grew up looking. Apart from the uh, yeah, before like in Kenya was like Kalaba and Nyang, and then was like Kulibali. Yeah. But generally, I was looking up at uh, Thiago Silva from way back. So I'm fortunate to play with or against all of them apart from Thiago Silva so hopefully it happens soon. You've said Thiago Silva and who? 
Koulibaly, I played Koulibaly. against Koulibaly. him against Senegal, and then I played with Calabar, and I've played with uh, Mandela. So okay. Only one box to tick. Okay, that is the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>